Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is me amor sinzel also known as me no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook format on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs the mike wagner show can be heard on spreaker spotify iHeartRadio, youtube itunes anchor fm radio public and the mike wagner show.com mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe so sit back relax and enjoy another great episode of the mike wagner show Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit our line at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molsonzia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molsonzia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve 11 enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast for T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot of goodies. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, and a lot of cool merchandise, 24-7-365, Amazon.com slash Mia Mosenzia. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM as well as PayPal and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who had the um, number one hit, or should we say, a top 10 hit going back to 1976. He's the founder and lead, lead singer of Starbuck, known for the top 10 smash Moonlight Feels Right. They were formed in Atlanta, Georgia back in 74. The song peaked at number three back in 76. This group toured with ELO, KC and the Sunshine Band, Hall & Oates, Boston, and more. And uh, this gentleman began his career with a New Orleans bass band called Eternity's Children in the 60s. Had a hit called Mrs. Bluebird and... Um, also, he's got a book out, which is about a journey through the 60s and 70s memoir from the Mississippi Delta to Hollywood. Goes behind the scenes on a number of things like with ELO, American Bandstand, Merv Griffin, Midnight Special and more. And um, just goes to the life and times of Starbuck. And the book is called The Road to Moonlight Feels Right. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in beautiful downtown Atlanta, the lead, the founder and leader of Starbuck. And yes, Moonlight does feel right. Ladies and gentlemen, the author of The Road to Moonlight Feels Right. Ladies and gentlemen, singer and the multi-talented Bruce Blackman. Bruce, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Glad to be here. Well, it's great to have you on board, too. And of course, you know, Many of us remember the song where Moonlight Feels Right back in 1976, hit number three in the top 100 Billboard charts. So you're the founder and lead singer of Starbuck, and um, you guys got together in Atlanta, Georgia back in 74. You guys toured with ELO, KC and the Sunshine Band, Hall and & Oates, and more. You began your career with New Orleans-based uh, Eternity's Children in the 60s with Mrs. Bluebird. And you also have a book called The Moonlight Feels Right, and of course... Um, 
He also had um, a- another release, which is called Moonlight Feels Right uh, 2014, featuring Jim's Cafe. You also had some other hits. And before we talk about your book and talk about your great music, Bruce, um, tell us how you first got started. Oh, well, I, I, I got into music when I was in the fourth grade. That's when I started writing songs. Um, then I, I ended up in the band. I played trumpet. Mm-hmm. And then I, I got a, I, I was also an athlete. And I got a track scholarship to Mississippi State. And uh, was going to be in the band there, but the coaches wouldn't let me. They said it wasn't the right image for their athletes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You can't be an athlete and a musician at the same time, right? Ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. You might want to ask some of the rappers that nowadays, but that's another time. So go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but I was just, I mean, mu- everything I did other than music was just on the side. I, athletics or, or whatever it was. I was just completely enamored with music. And that's all I cared about. And got in a band when I was about 15. And uh, ended up putting together Eternity's Children, which was the best from three bands that I had been in, that I got them all to come together as one. It was a really powerhouse uh, group. Uh, we just didn't, you know, I don't know, weren't in the right place. We had uh, Kevin Deverich was our manager who managed the uh, uh, Eric Burden and the Animals and the Who. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we got on TV shows, Bandstand, and we did a... Uh, hullabaloo, all that stuff way back in the day, open for the doors at, at the whiskey. It seemed like everything was just right for us to take off, but it didn't, didn't quite happen. Mrs. Bluebird was just a, a regional hit. It was big in the southeast, but it just didn't break in the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. And um, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing uh, for the rest of your life? Well, really, when when uh, I left Eternity's uh, Children because the, the bad, it's just a long story. It's in the book. It was bad other things. It, it didn't have to do with the band itself. But um, when I left, uh, they hired a guy named Bo Wagner. Mm-hmm. And Bo Wagner came in the band because he liked the songs the band was recording. And Bo played Vibes and Marimba. Mm. And and I mean he was a Bo Wagner was the greatest marimba player ever lived. He played on the uh, and toured with the, the he did all the association records. Um, Along comes Mary and Cherish. He was with the Fifth Dimension, mm-hmm. Lewis and Clark Expedition. Just an incredible talent. He was a Mouseketeer. He toured with Lawrence Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And anyway, uh, Bo when he found out the guy who had written the songs left the group, he quit. Uh huh. And then he set about trying to find me. It took him a while, but he was on the tour with the Liberace. And I get the call from this guy, a complete stranger, Bo Wagner. And he, he, he offered, uh, he wanted uh, me and my wife Peggy to come to the Liberace show mm-hmm. that night. He had VIP tickets for us. You know, we weren't particularly interested, but he was very convincing. So we went. And we were real impressed with what Bo was doing. And he talked to us after that, and, and uh, he wanted us to put a group together uh, uh, featuring my, my songs along with his marimba and vibes. So that's what we did. We we put a group together and, and uh, started working on the original material, and uh, the rest is what it is. And then how did the other members uh, come into play as well, too? Yeah, but we went through a, a lot of of people because we we didn't know any of the people we were hiring. It's not that difficult to find excellent musicians and singers, but most bands come up because you know they're in a neighborhood and they were played in the garage and they know each other. Whereas we were hiring complete strangers, so what we didn't know is the personalities of these people, and we had some doozies. Let me tell you. So we were, <laughs> So uh, we 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 went through a, a lot of lineup changes, but it didn't change the music. I mean, we were, I basically record the music at home in my house, and then we'd take the tracks and I, I would do the whole track, and then just the band would learn it just like they're learning a copy song. Mm-hmm. And that's and that, a, yeah, and that, and that sounds rather interesting as well too. You also toured with ELO, Casey and the Sunshine Band, Hollow Notes, Boston, and everything else. And um, what was it like uh, playing with those guys? And uh, also, who's your favorite? Oh, my favorite was ELO, hands down. My second favorite would be uh, Boston. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the way we were treated, they were nice guys. You know, we got to talk to them. There wasn't what I call the rock and roll pecking order 
where they mess with your sound if you're the opening. They don't want you to do too good, that kind of stuff. The one I liked the least was Casey and the Sunshine Band. Oh, really? Why is that? Yeah. Well, because they didn't want you to, you know, they, they didn't like it if you got a good reception. They, KC was real insecure. He had a great band, but KC's not much of a singer at all, uh, and he knew it. But his background, I mean, the band smoked when you heard him live, but he, he wasn't singing anything that really required uh, much vocals. And they just, they didn't treat us well, but, you know. That, that happened a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think happens he, to everybody. And I think he should have learned from you, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he had a lot of success, you know. Mm-hmm. I, 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 uh, I met him many, many years later, and he was completely changed. You know, we were just laughing about it. and we, You know, we were just kids. What you, what, what, you know, what do we know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, just like those days. I remember that, and things change and everything else. And uh, who are some of your favorite artists, singers, songwriters, and uh, musicians growing up, Bruce? Well, my favorite ones, I was really always a song guy. Mm -hmm. There was no particular artist. I found out years later that most of the songs that I really, really liked a lot were written by Burt Bacharach. Oh, wow. So, so in turn, but I didn't know Burt Bacharach. I, I didn't know who wrote them or anything, but, but I mean, just going all the way through his catalog from the very early sixties on up through the De- Dion Warwick and all that kind of stuff. So he was probably the, the, the one that uh, had the most influence on me because I would start digging out the chords and he, he's a very complicated, very accomplished musician. And, and that's what I, 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 I like to use chords. I throw in some thirteens and flat nines and I'm, I'm not a three chord blues guy, you know? Mm hmm. It, it seems like everybody's going three chords these days and it's getting advertised like crazy. And um, you're pretty much a one of a kind. I got to say that. And since we're on the subject about uh, songwriters, besides Burt Backrack, who, who are your other favorite uh, songwriters growing up? Well, I, uh, I would say um, it, it, well, go back real, real young. I'd probably say Cole Porter. But then, then coming on up into the 60s and, and into the early 70s, it would be. Uh, Probably Randy Newman and Donald Fagan. Mm-hmm. Okay. That, that, that would be the one. Randy Newman from a lyric standpoint. Donald Donald Fagan from from a, a music standpoint. Okay. All right. Well, that sounds interesting as well, too. And we'll talk about your group, including the smash hit Moonlight Feels Right and your other works in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by SoundCraft Studios. Visit online at SoundCraftStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. SoundCraft Studios is the answer. SoundCraft Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon. And paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and Eve Levin endorsed by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms. Take us with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia for great books and merchandise and more. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM as well as PayPal and the Mike Widener Show.com. Make sure you donate generously today. We're here with the founder and lead singer of Starbuck Blues, Bruce Blackman, here on the Mike Widener Show. And before we talk about your top 10 smash hit, Moonlight Feels Right, and um, you had some other works as well too you had uh everybody be dancing searching for a thrill let me be lucky man i got to know and uh the full cleveland and uh tell us about some of your uh, other works well uh, uh i i released two albums on myself under my own, own name uh they had five singles that charted in the fmqb adult contemporary chart 
Um, right now, I'm in the studio recording a Starbuck 45th anniversary, which we hope to get out next spring. Oh, wow. So that's been a lot. Of, and I'm also recording the very first chart record that I ever had, Mrs. Bluebird. I'm taking it into modern standards and, and uh, recording a very extensive uh, symphonic version of that. Okay. All right. And also, and also the song uh, Moonlight Feels Right, which made the uh, top 10 hit number three in the Billboard 100. One of my favorites back in 1976. And uh, tell us more about the song and what inspired you to write it. Well, the song is a true story. It was based on a true story. Um, uh, I was uh, sitting in, a, I'd been in an accident, cut the finger off on my right hand. So it was in a big cast. I was sitting on, on the floor in our apartment and playing a mini mode with my left hand. You know, a mini mode only play one one note at a time. And I was just sitting there going, do, 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 do. And all of a sudden, I just popped in my head about, I went to a college to meet this girl who I'd seen in a, a photograph in the newspaper um, of a beauty contest. I'd never seen a woman that beautiful. My God, she made Elizabeth Taylor look ugly. <laughs> <laughs> or or even Cindy Crawford nowadays, or um, whoever else see a supermodel out there, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I wanted to go to this college to meet her, and I asked her out twice, and she said no both times. And the third time, we were going to a, uh, we had a pep rally at the stadium. We were walking back, and she was up in front of me, and I walked up beside her, and there was a little wind blowing. And I asked her out again, and she said yes. So huh. I'm sitting in my apartment playing – the mini mode, and uh, that thought came in my head. When she said yes, the wind blew some luck in my direction. Caught it in my hands today. And then I looked up. The TV was on, but the sound wasn't on. And I was looking at Gene Hackman, and the movie was The French Connection. Interesting. And I immediately went, I finally found a, a tricky, made a fr tricky French Connection. You winked and gave me your okay. And now... When Peggy and I started dating on one of our dates, I took her out to a lake in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And I had an old ratted out MGB convertible. And we dropped the top and we could see the moon. The, the lake was just dead still. And the moon was reflecting off the lake. So those were the images that I brought into the, to the song. And when I wrote it, I couldn't say we dropped the top at a lake in Mississippi. So I ended up changing it to, uh, to drop the top at uh, Chesapeake Bay. And the reference to Ole Miss that's in the song was at the time she went out with me, she was dating a big time football player from Ole Miss. Wow. So that's where I threw in Ole Miss. So it's basically that. It's it's the story of when we met. And we've been married for 51 years now. Oh, man. Congratulations. A, I've, thank you. I've seen the stuff on the Internet about the, the songs about this sleazy old guy just picking up a young girl in, in Baltimore. No, <laughs> it's exactly the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. It's a semi sleazy young guy asking a young lady out. That's what it is. <laughs> huh. That's rather interesting. And you also turned this into a book called The Moonlight Feel The Road to Moonlight Feels Right. And you also did Moonlight Feels Right 24T featuring Jim's Cafe. And um, we'll talk about the book in just one quick minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the Mike Widener Show.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, International Warring Author Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the founder and lead singer of Starbuck and the author of The Road to Moonlight Feels Right, Bruce Blackman, after this timeout. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. 
it's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the founder, lead singer, and author, The Road to Moonlight Feels Right, Bruce Blackman of Starbuck here on The Mike Wagner Show. And um, let's talk about the book for just a minute here and uh, tell us more about the book, The Road to Moonlight Feels Right, and what inspired you to uh, start writing the book. Well, uh, I wasn't really inspired to write a book. I, I was uh, just to amuse myself. I started putting stories, little stories I'd write uh, up on Facebook. Mm hmm. And some of them would get, you know, a thousand, two thousand likes. It blew me away. I couldn't even believe that was happening. Well, one day a publisher called me. Huh. And they said, we'd like to publish your book. And I said, I hadn't written the book. They said, oh, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> and so I worked on it for about a year. I just pulled the stories that I had written and I expanded, uh, I expanded the stories and added some and uh, ended up with a three book deal. I have a new one coming out next year called You Gotta Be Some Reason to Smile. Wow. You, know, you got to be somebody's reason to smile. That's the name of it. So uh, I just start the book off with the ELO concert, the whole backstory of it, how we got there, blah, blah, blah. And then, then I back up into my childhood and go through like some of the questions you've asked me, where the music came from, inspirations. And then the one thing people ask me over and over is about the white hat. So I have a whole story about how that white hat happened. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the photographs on the back of the first album, the Moonlight Feels Right album, I'm not wearing a white hat. Huh. That didn't appear until later. And I, I have those stories like that in there. That's rather interesting. You talked about behind the scenes with ELO, also American Bandstand, Merv Griffin, Midnight Special, and even Dinah Shore, which is also amazing. And um, I guess what's it just you know like um, backstage with uh, Dick Clark, Merv Griffin, Midnight Special, and um, Dinah Shore? If you want to throw in some others, feel free to do so. Uh, I think you may have covered them. The uh, Dinah Shore show was interesting because. Everybody said it back then I looked like Burt Reynolds. But she was <laughs> she was dating Burt Reynolds then. So we were walking down the hall, I think it was in C B S building, and man she stopped, she did a double take on me. <laughs> Cause everybody said I, I said, No, nah, that's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I wasn't I wasn't related to him at all, you know, not in the least. But uh she invited us out. We went to the uh premiere of the movie Rocky. Uh, with her and uh, 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 Majors, Lee Majors and Fair Fawcett. Uh -huh. And uh, that was a trip. They were, I mean, Fair Fawcett and Lee Majors were about as big a star as you get. And she was on Charlie's Angels, and he was a $6 million man. Mm -hmm. But they were just people. We had a good time, you know. Mm -hmm. Just like us, they just got lucky. <laughs> just like the I should say, luckier. <laughs> Well, I could say that just like the song as well, too. And uh, you also had experiences with William Faulkner, Jim Morrison, and you also appeared in um, The Graduate as well. Tell us about those. Okay. Uh, well, William Faulkner, when I was growing up, uh, I have a good friend named John Keating. His father was a, a, a wrote for National Geographic and was good friends with uh, William Faulkner. And so Faulkner used to come to the Keating's house in my hometown of Greenville, Mississippi. So I was just a kid, but I used to sit in there and just listen to them talk. Most of the time I didn't know what they were talking about and wish I did, but mm -hmm. that's how I knew him. <laughs> and um, what was the other thing he said? I think we, let's see, I think it was William Faulkner, Jim Morrison, and an appearance in The Graduate. Uh, yeah, well, Jim Morrison, we opened for the doors at uh, the Whiskey A Go Go. Uh, it was like two months before Light My Fire became a hit. Uh huh. So uh, w when I went out, we went out on a break. Uh, Morrison was out there, and I wanted to ask, talk to him about the music, and I walked up to him and said something, and he was just, I mean, he was in another world, man. Really? He, he was gone. I didn't get it at all. He, 
he would take his shirt off and t- start screaming F you and then I didn't get it. They sounded terrible, but the girls in there, man, they were just screaming. And <laughs> so anyway, I walked outside. After that, I, there was a club right next to it called the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. And I walked in there and there was a band in there playing and they played one song for a whole set for 45 minutes. I went, wow, the song was in the God of Davida. Huh. And the band was the Iron Butterfly. And that song wasn't a hit yet. Mm-hmm. And so I, I at, sitting at the bar and Doug Engel, the guy that wrote it, the singer, came up and sat down. We had a nice conversation. Well, then when I walked out of the galaxy, the Sunset Strip was all lit up. Wow. And there was a bunch of people around. I said, what's going on? They said, they're filming a movie. And I said, what movie? And uh, nobody knew. And so this guy came up and said, we need some hippies to be in this shot. <laughs> he said, anybody want to do it? And I said, yeah, I'll do it. I had long hair there. You know? <laughs> so I stood up against the side of the whiskey with, with several other people. And uh, next thing I know, they, uh, action, you know, and all of a sudden this little old short guy with a big old head comes running by. He's in a white suit and, and pulling a girl behind him. And then they ran by and ran into the galaxy. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then the guy yells, cut. And I said, well, what is that? Well, I found out later the guy was, it was uh, Dustin Hoffman and the movie was The Graduate. Huh. So I'm in it for about three seconds. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't that something? <laughs> but who knew? I mean, nobody had ever heard of any of those, any, the movie or Dustin Hoffman either at that point. Wow. That is something. And I'm going through your book as well, too, The Road to Moonlight Fields, right, written by uh, Bruce Black and the Starbuck here on the Mike Wagner Show. And you talked about um, the Moonlight Fields right in Birmingham, how you got started, about journey through 60s and 70s from the Mississippi Delta over to Hollywood. And, of course, you go into the place where I see some interesting um, subchapters, like about the joy of being poor, holy rolling in London, selling crackers in Mississippi, and um, the king of the hood, and uh, maybe just a bit about those if there's a um, favorite sub chapter you want to talk about you know feel free well the one holy rolling in london is one of my favorites uh my my grandparents on my mother's side lived in london arkansas population 350 mm-hmm. so well, we, one summer we were there my mother and her sisters left and left we me with uh my grandparents mama papa and mama vincent well, I was thrilled because Mama was going to be gone on Sunday, and that meant I didn't have to go to church. <laughs> but Mama Vincent said, you're going to church. So I had to put on my Sunday clothes, and we walked up this dirt road up a mountain. It was scorching hot. Went into this old stone church, and I mean, it was chaos. This guy jumped up on the stage in overalls and started saying, Jesus, 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 there's something special about that man. Going, People were hollering and screaming, and I thought it was great. So I joined in. I didn't know the, these words they were saying, so I just made up my own words. And I started yelling and screaming. I even stood on my head in the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and was waving my feet. And nobody even noticed. I mean, it, it was it was nothing. And so when uh, when my mama came back, my grandmother told my mother, she said, oh, Bruce really got the Holy Spirit in church Sunday. <laughs> and mama looked at me and said, Bruce, what did you do? <laughs> Did you steal his juice or something? Jesus juice or what? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And, and of course, you know, getting into a little bit of a food, wine, everything like that. You were selling some crackers in Mississippi. How about that? Yeah, that was my first business. I, 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 uh, I got some crackers, you know, stole them from my mama. I wasn't real aware that I was actually stealing them. I was in the fourth grade. I put them in my radio flyer wagon and wrap them up in the napkin. And I put five crackers in there and sell them for a penny. Wow. And I sell it. I was doing well. I mean, I was, some days I made 10 cents. And at that time when candy was like three for a penny, I couldn't even spend 10 cents. Oh, my gosh. too much money. <laughs> <laughs> but then Mama found out what I was doing, you know, and she said, well, you can't do that because the reason you're making money is because you didn't have to pay for the crackers. Turns out I was selling the crackers for less than they cost. Huh. That's why it was a. That's why it was a hit business. <laughs> oh wow, that is something. And of course, you also ventured into uh, being a new newspaper publisher, which uh, turned out to be brief for you. Oh, very brief. I I bought a. <laughs> uh, the, this story actually happened in a lot of places because uh, a lot of kids did it, and I and later on the Mayberry show, 
they stole that story and had Opie do it. Anyway, I bought, I bought a, it, they had a little print kit for 99 cents. You could buy from the Johnson and Smith catalog. Mm-hmm. And you took the, you had these little uh, wooden uh, uh, rows with, with grooves in them and you could take the letters and put them in there. It took forever. To oh do my it. gosh. And then you could run ink over it, press it on a paper one at a time to make a newspaper. So I made a newspaper and I told, I didn't know what to write. And then I heard my mother at a, uh, canasta, I think they were playing canasta. I heard some women talking about other women, so I wrote stories about what they were saying about other women, hmm. and and how awful Mrs. Moore's curtains were. It was the awfulest green I've ever seen. That kind of stuff. And I put it out in the neighborhood and got in a world of hurt. <laughs> oh boy, big controversy. I, that that newspaper got shut down real quick. Oh my gosh! And then it led you to uh, the the my first performance, or it could be my best worst day. Well, my first performance was at Archer Park in Greenville, Mississippi, and I sang a song called Little Toot about a tugboat. Mm-hmm. And I came in second to girl who twirled a baton with chicken feathers on the end of it. Oh, wow. I was, completely, I was completely humiliated. I started thinking about maybe I should get me some chicken feathers and put on my arms and, and enter another contest with chicken feathers on my arm and sing Little Toot. So maybe I could win that way. Hmm. That's rather interesting. And uh, and also, too, that the fact you also go to the people as well, too, high and low. And um, I, I guess you have some questions there. Did you sleep in the rain? Don't you know anything? And um, ta- and uh, a guy or lady talking about birds, adverbs, and wine, Mrs. Nell Thomas, and good old Coach Wally Beach. I'm sure it's some great stories about those. You can um, pick a few and uh, tell about those. Well, let's say you mentioned one of my best worst days when my senior year in high school, uh, we were uh, played in a uh, bowl game, shrimp bowl in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And I had been injured, had, been, had severe injuries all season. The only reason I was on the team is because I was the fastest guy in the state and uh-huh. they wanted you wanted my speed. So Coach Beach put me on the opening kickoff. He put me on as a safety man. He said, just make sure that nobody uh, makes a touchdown. So they kicked off this guy. I weighed about 150, and this guy that was running the ball, returning the punt, was about 200. Oh, my gosh. And all of a sudden, I just see all our players just start falling back down, and here's this guy coming at me, and I went into him, stuck my helmet right in his chest, as we were taught to do. Mm-hmm. And I woke up in the hospital, and I was paralyzed. Oh, I separated wow. separated both my shoulders, broke fingers, and had stitches in my head. It, it was – that was – the reason I said it was my best worst day because that's the last time I had to play football. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's totally understandable. I guess say that. I mean, I would have done the same thing too. With those nowadays, it's like you know, sticking your helmet in somebody is considered illegal these days. If you got you know, crack helmets, it's like one of the oh, players yeah. did oh, that, yeah. and yeah, oh my gosh. And well, next- we were taught that we had we had stainless steel Riddell helmets. And we were that that helmet was a weapon, and you were supposed to use it as a, as a weapon, and that's what we did. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, you know, I remember those mm-hmm. days you did that, and then one of the football players from the Packers was mm-hmm. um, using it to uh, crack their helmets. They literally split, and then they had to um, put an outlaw to it. And um, also, you had your journey as well too. We talked about Bib by Eternity's children, and you also went between risky and crazy. How to lose a record deal with hot fudge cake? It's like. Losing a record deal with hot fudge cake? How would you do that? You're making me hungry already over this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happened, that's for sure. Uh, when we, we put uh, the first Starbucks together, because uh, Bo's, uh, Bo Wagner's association with Gary Paxton uh, from the, the uh, association band, Cherish, Along Comes Mary, those things, uh, Gary Paxton moved to Nashville. So Bo, Bo called him, and he said, well, come on up. We'll record an album. So we went up. We recorded an album in one day. And that night, we went out to uh, Shoney's mm-hmm. with with uh, Gary and some executives from RCA. Mm-hmm. And this crazy bass player, who was a great bass player, remember I told you, we, you didn't know about people's personalities because they were strangers. Uh-huh. So we're sitting there and eating, and they came up and said, what do you, what, what, what you want to order? And this bass player said, I just want some hot fudge cake, nothing else. <laughs> so the waitress said, you want, to bring, you want me to bring it with everybody else's food? or bring it? He, he said, no, no, bring it down. 
So she almost, you know, and within a minute, she brings in this hot fudge cake. He looked at it and he went, oh, my God, I love hot fudge cake. It makes me crazy. I want to screw it. And then he picked up the bottom of it and raised his arms and put it in his armpits and started running his armpits back and forth. <laughs> and uh, that's how we lost our record deal with RCA. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know how you lose a record deal like that, but I, it had to be amusing. I can say that. I don't know if I'm having a hot fudge cake right now, but I'm not putting that thing under my arms whatsoever. I'd rather just eat <laughs> no it. Way. Thank you. <laughs> no way. No way. Of course, I, I fired the guy after that, but but uh, hey, it's probably the most unique way to lose a record deal in history. Oh my gosh. I have never heard of that. I think I'll share my story with some other people. Is that okay with you? Sure. Absolutely. All right. Well, well, talk about more about the book, uh, Bruce Blackman with Starbuck, The Road to Moonlight Feels right here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, I'm finding some very interesting topics. And uh, you can also, um, you know, he'll tell you where to get the book. And uh, in the meantime, we continue the journey as well, too, that uh, besides losing a record deal with hot fudge cake. And um, you also experienced the worst TV interview ever. And uh, you can tell us about that. Okay. Uh, I don't remember where it was right now. It's probably it's in the book. I, I don't know if I know where it was, but hey, we I went into this uh, TV station to do an interview. Went in this little room. At the end of the room was a green couch. Ooh. So we sat down, and the guy said, "He said, hey man, we just I, we're just gonna wing it. You know, I'm good at this." He said, "We just wing it, okay?" And I said, "Sure." And it was, it was one mic. He was holding the mic, and he said, "Okay, camera, boom, red light comes on." The guy says, "Okay, I'm sitting here with." Uh, uh, and I said, Bruce Blackman. He went, Bruce Blackman of, uh, I went, Starbuck. And he said, Starbuck. <laughs> and literally, the interview went on the whole way. He knew nothing. He didn't know who I was, what I was. He didn't know anything. And we would, we had done a concert that night in that town. Mm -hmm. it, it was, it was, it was absolutely horrifying. I was embarrassed. I didn't know what to do. And then after he did that, he said, uh, and we were Bruce Blackman, and, 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 I, and I went to Starbucks, and then he went, uh, uh, and then he just stuck the mic over in front of me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I didn't know what I was supposed to get up and tap dance or what. It <laughs> wasn't like he asked a question, you know. Oh, my gosh. And uh, my, if I, my if I ask, uh, where was that TV station located so I remember not to watch it? I don't. I don't remember. I, it was somewhere in the south. I, right now, it's just not coming to me where it was. It wasn't a major market. It was a medium size. Oh, that's not bad. I was going to say. I hope you don't uh, call mine the worst interview ever. If we have something to discuss over hot fudge cake, if you dare do so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the only person that's ever asked me about the hot fudge cake. Oh, really? Okay, you know yeah. something? Yeah, my wife and I were just talking about some hot fudge cake, and she wanted to have some pudding. I says, I really want some hot fudge cake. We fought over that, and then I was about to get some uh, hot fudge cake or a little pudding, and all of a sudden, here we are talking about hot fudge cake. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> You may not ever want any again. <laughs> well, not with that guy, but I'm not going to do it under under my armpits. Like may, maybe give it to a dog. We'll see what happens. But it's it. <laughs> there you go. And, and and of course, finally, we'll uh, not to you know give away the whole book. Naked Cowboys in Mexico, along with the United Artists uh, double deal with uh, Bruce Blackman at Starbucks. The Road to Moonlight feels right and um, rather interesting. Naked Cowboys in Mexico and the United Artists double deal. Well, that's that story is a very long story. Uh, it's in the book, and I, I chronicle five different days. I, we were supposed to go to Puerto Vallarta, my wife and I, to Puerto Vallarta, to meet with uh, uh, Charlie Minor, who was the head promo guy with United Artists and some other United Artists executives. So we decided we were supposed to meet them on a Saturday. We decided to go to this resort in Mexico the Saturday before and stay there for a week and then go on over to Puerto Vallarta for the meeting. So when we got to the, this place, I, there's just no way I can describe all this. It's a long story. But one of the ha things that happened one night, uh, they were having this show. And we were sitting there watching, and they had these cowboys with these big eyes. And, 
had uh, little spangles on the end of the eyes, and they'd roll the eyes one way and then the other way, and they all had goatees. Oh, wow. You know, and these big cowboy hats. And we kept we kept looking and looking, and all of a sudden this uh, couple right in front of us, this woman said, George, quit looking at those. Those are naked women. <laughs> <laughs> so the eyes were the the breast and <laughs> you know that's <laughs> hey it was mexico but a lot of stuff happened there it was the worst vacation in the history of earth they ought to make a movie out of out of that oh that story oh you know something that and a hot fudge cake you know i would put those two together you can make a song and an album of it it's like i can see that happening <laughs> yeah we there's, a, there's another story about a, a caravel Gua, guadalupe where we went to a resort there and they only spoke french mm -hmm. and so this one night they were having believe it or not it's called a moonlight festival oh wow and this was in january of 77 moonlight was probably still on the charts then mm -hmm. so they were having this moon and they said whoever you know, the, when they, the place all turned upside down they said turn your place over and whoever has a moon emblem under there you you you'd be the king and queen of the festival huh bingo who do who you think got it i did so this guy <laughs> i turned it over and this french chef came running out and he said ah for you pour vous, pour vous, for you for you put this big old skillet on big old flat top skillet on and had a pitcher of blood, and he poured the blood on the skillet, and all beat it up and everything, and then he took the blood and put it in a rubber <laughs> and, and laid it on our place, and we go, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to eat this, uh, this sizzled blood? That was our reward for being the king and queen of the festival. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. I'm coming up with some great ideas for dinner and dessert right now. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, of course, there's more chapters as well, too. And in order to uh, pick up the book, where can we find The Road to Moonlight Feels Right at, Bruce? Well, it's Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Really, every online bookstore has it. Okay. And also, uh, do you have a website uh, where they can uh, also pick up your book? Well, that's the word verb. That's the publisher. The best place is to use your well-known uh uh, 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 online booksellers. Okay, we will certainly do so. We're here with uh, Bruce Blackman of Starbucks here on the Mike Wagner Show talking about the book, The Moon Road to Moonlight Feels Right. Of course, a big uh, top 10 hit, Moonlight Feels Right, back in um, 1976. We'd love to have you back on, talk more stories. And of course, you got some books. We'd love to have you back on, talk more about those. And just a few minutes here, Bruce. And um, what can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond? Well, 2022, new book. You got to be some reason, body's reason to smile. A Starbucks 45th anniversary album, and I'm also releasing a piano jazz instrumental album. Amazing! We're certainly looking forward to it. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Bert Bacharach. Okay, that's a good one. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I'm sorry, you 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 broke up there a second. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Don't listen to any, what anybody says. Be naive and go for it. And I think that's really good advice. Once again, Bruce Blackman of Starbuck with the book, The Road to Moonlight Feels, right here on the Mike Widener Show. Bruce, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Love your stories. We got to do this again. Looking forward to having you again soon. Looking forward to your new books. Make sure you keep yourself to date. Don't forget to keep in touch. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Where can people purchase? Check out your books or even check out your music and check out your other works. Uh, you get, come come to Facebook. Just type in my name on Facebook. Bingo. We certainly will do so. Once again, Bruce, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. And let's do this again. You've been absolutely great. And yes, Moonlight does feel right. Yes, it does. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level.
next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 